Oh, Malcolm. Hey, how's it going? Hey, all good, all good. Great to have you here. It's great to be here. Guys, uh, we have uh, Malcolm here from WAX, which is a World Asset uh, Exchange, right? Uh, Malcolm's going to... World Asset Exchange, yeah. Yes, and Malcolm is going to tell us all about what WAX is about. And he and uh, please, Malcolm, take it away. Introduce yourself. And do you see the community here? Yeah, hi, everybody. Uh, hi. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Um, so uh, I'm not sure if you can see my screen. Uh, can you see yeah. the big logo? The... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we see. Yeah. Okay, great. Just want to make sure it was sharing. Well, thanks for thanks for your time. I wanted to give you some background as to what we're up to. Uh, you probably heard of Wax about two years ago. We launched a token sale, uh, and it was really based upon a very simple idea that there was a need for a blockchain for Micro for, for digital goods. And what we built is that blockchain as well as a microservices platform. And so I wanted to describe what it is we built and sort of an update as to where the technology is. So so has anyone here like bought a crypto kitty? No. Or an we, NFT? But we did pass the EOS torch within us when it was handed. Yeah, which is an yeah. <laughs> good, good. So everyone here knows what an NFT is, obviously, right? Is anyone there? Okay, so a non -fun I wasn't clear if everyone knows what it is. No, uh, go explain it briefly, please. Great, great, great. Okay, great. Well, I'll get into it. So um, basically, our background uh, is started with Opskins, and um, we, you know, let me move this out of the way. I don't know if that's in the way. Um, and uh, we built a marketplace. It was a very, very successful one. Uh, we have about 10 million uh, customer accounts on it. We're growing about 100,000 users a month. And it's doing about, you know, 2 million daily transactions. And, you know, we did about over $2 billion worth of transactions on this platform. So we really, really understand virtual items. And we recognize that there was a big opportunity to essentially offer the Opskins platform to anyone and everyone. Because many people came to us and said, hey, can we white label your platform? And... Honestly, we weren't in that business, but when we saw what was possible with blockchain, we have imagined that one day we'd be able to offer it for free. And of course, as you know, it wasn't until the delegated proof of stake technology that we recognized there was essentially going to be transaction capacity that could support not only our existing business, but then have enough room for growth. And that's kind of what led us to uh, being ready to build a blockchain. Um, Several of our team members have a lot of experience in this space, not just in uh, Wax and Opskins, but Jonathan was the inventor of item trading. He started 25 years ago, uh, was the guy who created Ultima Online item trading. Uh, William and Jonathan actually co-founders of Tether, so we have a lot of background in you know, building assets uh, on you know, the blockchain space and in the video game space. Our team is about 90 globally, uh, all all different uh, geographies. I think we're in about 10 countries. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, we've worked a lot with uh, the item trading at the beginning. And it was about, it accrued about a $10 billion industry, uh, virtual items that are skins. And these are purely cosmetic in nature. And that's about a $50 billion industry. Uh, and Opskins was the leader in that. Tether, you guys obviously know, uh, you know, one and a half trillion dollars of uh, trading volume. And then WAX, we're going after about a $2 trillion market. And I'll talk about how we've, how we've gone about that. So just so you get a sense of where WAX is, uh, our test net is one of the most active blockchains. It's number eight on Blocktivity. Uh, we're measuring tr transactions, not operations. So you may notice if you look on Blocktivity, there's a little TX next to our volume as opposed to OP. Um, we, we sort of believe that OP is, is not a very meaningful statistic because you know, it would be like measuring the Amazon by, you know, how many times a crane goes in and out of a warehouse. Uh, that's not really useful. What you want to know is like how many customers are and how much they're spending. And that's kind of what we are measuring with our transaction volume. But even by that metric, it's, it's one of the most in the world. We believe it's probably one of the top two or three in the world uh, if you are comparing apples to apples. Um, we have two dApps running on uh, Wax at the moment. 
uh, and they are NFT dApps. So an NFT is a non-fungible token, which means a token that's one of a kind or unique. Being unique means that it can be connected to a specific asset. Uh, and in the video game context, it's a specific video game skin uh, or, or a digital item. And we'll talk about what virals are, but those are tokenized consumer products. It's basically like Tether, but backed by a sneaker or backed by a hoodie or backed by you know, an iPhone. So it's a specific uh, physical item, or it could be a service even, uh, backed by um, or that backs an NFT. Our main net goes live on the 30th of June, which is in a couple days. Uh, we're doing about $400 million of volume uh, annualized of NFTs currently on the test net. So that obviously that'll transition to the main net when it goes live. And um, we are definitely the first and largest market, NFT marketplace accepting you know, credit cards. So that gives you kind of a basic setup. Um, the two dApps that I mentioned are Viral and Vigo. So Viral's traded about $95 million worth. And as I mentioned, it's like Tether for consumer products. And that was launched in December. Uh, and those NFTs, we've essentially used uh, all on this uh, delegated proof of stake chain, which I'll talk about uh, what WAX is uh, designed on and built on. Uh, and Vigo started actually originally on an Ethereum chain, um, and Ethereum actually almost put us out of business because of the spike in fees and the slowdown in transaction times. You probably remember the whole Fcoin thing. Uh, we went from making money every day to losing $3 million a day. And so we very quickly uh, spun up a private Ethereum chain, transitioned Vigo over to that private Ethereum chain, um, and now uh, that DAP will be, runs on WAX. So. Um, so we've done about 90 million NFT transactions on this platform in the past 12 months. And uh, what I'm gonna do is talk about the blockchain itself and the microservices. So I know a lot of you guys are technically oriented, so we can get into a little bit more of the details. So technically, it's a delegated proof of stake system. It's completely backward compatible with EOS. So that means that dApps on EOS would run on WAX with basically changing a single line of code. And that's the essentially the public endpoint to, to our chain. Uh, it has 21 guilds, this equivalent to a block producer. You have staking and voting rewards. And we've designed a built-in, provably fair random number generator that's on chain. Um, we also have you know, max transaction speeds, average transaction speeds, block times, you recall, looks very similar to EOS. And then we're launching with these integrations, which are Ledger, Scatter, uh, we'll be uh, having links integration, and then microservices. So the whole approach is it's free, fast, and fair. Now, the blockchain itself is, of course, a part of the platform that we've built. But the WAX blockchain, this, this protocol blockchain, is only one part of what we built. The next part is we think of as the service layer. And so this allows you to create accounts, uh, create a all access OAuth type service. You can create NFTs, you can trade them. Uh, of course you can buy and sell them in a marketplace. You can see them in a very visual explorer. And as I mentioned, the on-chain random number generator. So I'll go through these to the, and some screenshots of them so you get a sense of how they work. But each one of these services essentially sits between you know, the DAP and the chain. And the whole point to that is essentially to allow the, the DAPs to have a very easy way of accessing these services and to be able to create a business that works right out the gate. And, and you'll, you'll see why in a second. Oops. Go forward there. Okay. So what we've designed is a system that we think of as being built for consumers. And the marketplace aspect, as you saw in the microservices, is sort of like a decentralized Amazon. Um, we've also built this decentralized Steam, which is the item trading and the item generation. And that's kind of uh, what Steam does in the video game world, a centralized business, of course. And then PayPal, which is essentially a universal account. You can log in anywhere, and then you can have access to your account balance, uh, which will include, in our case, your virtual items, not just uh, your you know, whatever money you have in there. And so these microservices replicate those three aspects, Amazon, Steam, and, and PayPal, 
uh, you know, we, we nicknamed the strategy WASP, right? Because it's WAX, Amazon, Steam, PayPal. So that people kind of understand where we're headed with it. So the OAuth system is pretty cool. Um, you can log in with Facebook, Google, Steam. You can create a, you know, create a new account with username and password. That's pretty straightforward and you know, many more integrations. Uh, but we KYC validate the accounts. We also assign reputation scores and they're included, the 2FA function is included with it. So the account reputation is really interesting. So when a DAP basically decides that it wants to use customers on the platform or acquire customers on the platform, that customer will then be attached to a rating. So if it's an A level customer, you know that's a, probably a high value customer. If it's a D or F, uh, it probably is a bot, right? And so in that way, um, because we're using uh, sophisticated tools to evaluate it, dApps then know where to focus their resources. Um, the Wax account is a cool way to create an account in seconds. So you can view, gift, and trade. Uh, it's really important to be able to obviously integrate with the uh, ability to view, vote, and stake. Uh, so we have a lot of interesting uh, adaptations uh, to address things like uh, voter apathy. Uh, so we've built uh, staking and voting right into the account here. And so what happens is uh, your staking will actually uh, decline if you don't vote. So in other words, you have a, a penalty if you're not an active member of the community as a staker. Uh, and that'll get people to vote more frequently for uh, proposals and vote more frequently for block producers. So we've made a number of modifications to governance rules. Uh, the folks at uh, StrongBlock and, and EOS Core Devs give us a lot of feedback as to things they suggested would make uh, governance work uh, more effectively. And we've, we've adopted uh, uh, quite a number of their recommendations. But this simple account interface, you don't have to deal with private keys or wallet addresses. Now, of course, you can using Scatter and other uh, inter uh, wallet integrators integrations, but you don't have to. And for a user who's not familiar with blockchain and just says, hey, look, I want a digital asset and I want to store it or I want to buy it, this it makes it really simple for them. Um, the trading is really interesting. This is the Wax Express trade visual, uh, and this has been used since we've launched it. Uh, it's been battle tested. Uh, many, many trades, over 90 million trades have been done using this uh, platform, and we have hundreds of third-party sites that have integrated with these APIs already. So this is, this is a really solid system. Our Block Explorer is one of the first of its kind. It's truly visual and useful so that you can actually look at an asset and get a sense of actually what it is. You can look at the ownership history. You can understand uh, where it's come from, who generated it, uh, what prices it's traded for. And so this is a very, very valuable uh, aspect of virtual items. Uh, and here's an example of what it looks like, you know, when you go into the 3D viewer. So you can zoom in and, and experience it. Now we also uh, have a NFT creator. This launched uh, about two weeks ago. And in the first 10 days alone, we generated about 100,000 brand new NFTs. So developers have really uh, embraced this and really love it. Um, it's very simple. You can do it without code. Of course, for developers, you'd like to use code, and you could do that as well. But we make it really easy for, for people to create um, NFTs. And then we have an on-chain random number generator. This is very important for really be, being able to achieve what we call provably fair. And provably fair for an off-chain random number generator, random number generation means that you have to collect all the data and then analyze it and determine if it's actually fair or not, which the average person isn't going to do. So an on-chain random number generator is really helpful because you know if a DAP is using this, they are delivering you actually fair uh, randomization. Uh, and this is really, really important, uh, we think, for the ecosystem because most games and game uh, related apps have some randomized element associated with it, and so this is important. Uh, and then, of course, people have access to the largest marketplace, uh, most successful one, which is Opskins, uh, and this provides you know 50 fiat currencies. Uh, people can buy and sell uh, you know anywhere in the world, uh, and has 24/7 customer support. I think about 16 languages, and of course, you know millions of paying customers. So our launch is June 30th, as I mentioned, and it's fully uh, backwards compatible with EOS. So it's think of it as EOS plus microservices, plus customers, plus fiat. 
So a bunch of other things, but the microservices are really the, the let's say the basket that gives you a sense of all the things that we're bringing along with WAX. Our mainnet launch partners, we've got uh, a couple of folks who will be uh, running the block, block producers or guilds, uh, and we will open it up to third parties uh, shortly after launch, uh, so that we wanna make sure obviously the, the launch is clean and uh, orderly, so you know we're gonna keep that closed at the beginning. And then we have lots of dApps and NFTs we're working with uh, as part of uh, what we're doing here. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little bit of a video where we integrated augmented reality commerce, uh, this idea of a viral, which is like I said, a tokenized physical product. Virals are interesting because, you know, they allow people to trade items that are in the physical world and to move ownership between individuals without the actual physical item moving. Uh, and it's, it's a really fascinating concept. We can see that there's been a ton of adoption uh, based upon you know, the trading volume and the partnerships that we've been working with. So watch this and you'll get a sense of kind of how it works. So this is on Snapchat. This is actually a demo we did at E3 uh, last or two weeks ago. So the person's looking at the item, the AR pops up once they hit the code and they play with it and they say, okay, I want that shoe. They swipe up, this is web-based, they log in, because that's the shoe they want, they put in a credit card, now they own it. Now that virtual item, that NFT, is theirs and they can trade it, which means I could put in somebody's phone number, text it to them, and now they own it. And then they decide, oh, you know what, I would like to redeem it and have it sent to me. So I put in my address, I hit redeem, and then it gets sent to me just like Amazon Prime. So it's a very straightforward way to uh, connect to the physical world and from the virtual world. Um, and that's basically you know, the whole idea, what I wanted to cover uh, from a technical standpoint and sort of the basis of what we're building. Uh, and I figured you know, I'd open it up for questions and we can talk about uh, you know, where we're headed and, and uh, what people are interested in, in knowing more about. Nice. Uh, so first of all, thanks. Well, I think, this, Thanks, if, I think if, uh, if uh, people here didn't know about WAX, well, then now they're, they're pretty, pretty uh, um, amazed at what they're seeing. I got tons of questions for you, you know, but uh, I'm going to start with some basic ones, maybe a bit some technical ones. So uh, maybe a, a bit more technical one, and then we go for the other one. So sure. you're providing... Uh, accounts for the users and all kind of all their onboarding for free, right? But at the yeah. other, but in the yeah. other hand, you use the Wax token as the EOS token works on the EOS uh, blockchain, which means you need Wax tokens to stake for resources and RAM and all the resources that that user is doing in order to perform his activities, right? Yes. And, and if all of this is given for free to the user. Who is paying for this wax tokens for the user? You okay. guys? Yeah, so we're, we're basically, we're taking a piece of the inflation that's being generated out of the block production since we have, so we were tightly holding the block production at the beginning and we'll be using that as a resource pool uh, to pay for the accounts. That's the first point. The, sec the second point is that not everyone will qualify for a free account. So basically, as I said, we score accounts and if it looks like you're a bot or it looks like that you're uh, you know, potentially not a legitimate uh, uh, user, um, you will have to go and pay for an account just like everyone else. Uh, but we will be subsidizing essentially accounts for what look like qualified folks. So that's awesome because it's a, you know it's a big pain on the, on the EOS network. It is, and it's a catch-22. It's like, hey, I want to get an account to hold EOS. Well, go get some EOS and then you can have an account. And now a more kind of a blockchain global question, which is, have you guys faced any difficulties by ha giving your users access to fiat money, credit card purchases, and all this thing seems to be kind of a, a true kind of a bone breaker for, for most of the blockchain scenes. How, how have you guys have gotten around this and allowed the, uh, everyone to buy digital assets with their credit card? Well, you know, I started off this presentation talking about our experience. 
Uh, and that's, that is probably one of the most important aspects of our experience because uh, most people who start and try to take credit cards will be put out of business by the fraudsters. Exactly. Uh, and so we have a lot of expertise we've, we've built to be able to do it effectively. So, but uh, you know, we, we, we spent a lot of money developing those capabilities and but trust me, they, they're, they're, they're worth every penny. Uh, I'm getting requests here for the folks in the community if this presentation is available publicly. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I think we'll be, po I don't think we've posted this exact presentation, but um, pretty much everything in here is part of a blog post uh, on wax.io. So, awesome. um, I, you know, it's, it's not necessarily all put together in here. This I've condensed to make it easy rather than scrolling through blog pages, but everything in here is, is, is on wax.io. Uh, I want to give the community a couple of questions. Yeah, by all means. There is such an overlap with Opskin. So you showed those 90 people. Are they also working on Opskins currently? Or is there a China wall or is it all kind of all together? So so remember I let me go back to this. Um, this will make make things more clear. So as I said, when you come on as a DAP, um, there are a bunch of functions and microservices that are valuable to you. And one of them is the marketplace. So if you have virtual items, one of the things that makes your, your DAP very, very valuable is the ability for people to cash those items out. So the marketplace has become a microservice, has become a part of Wax. You mean and so, all op Opskins is dedicated for that marketplace? That's what Opskins do? Opskins is a part of the, of the Wax uh, platform, and we've built essentially uh, the Opskins runs on Wax, right? And so those that mic that capability to run a marketplace comes from the Opskins technology. But Opskins preceded Wax. It did. We had we basically had to rip out all of the old PHP stuff and replace it with yeah. new tech. That's what we've been doing the past few years. You know that whole user base in Opskins, and they not they might not even be aware of Wax. This is continuing to trade the kind of skins that they were into, correct? Yeah, 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 exactly. So they go on there and they buy a viral or they buy a Vigo item and it turns out they're actually using the Wax platform and they may not know it. Now they're starting to see Wax because they have Wax All Access is how they log in now. Um, so we're, you know, starting to acclimate them to the Wax brand and what Wax is capable of. But, you know, there's a 19-year-old kid who rebuilt basically op skins using all the microservices you see here in about two weeks. And it, I, I, I am so totally impressed with what this kid has done. It looks, as, it looks better than Opskins. So the whole, the whole point was, I mean, obviously starting from scratch with a fresh 19 year old point of view with you know, fresh eyes. And so it looks fantastic, it goes really fast. And the whole idea was to show everyone, hey, this is how it could work and then use these tools to go build your own. And so Opskins is really a shining example of how all these services fit together. And that's where we battle test. So we battle test account on, on Opskins. We battle test all access on Opskins. We battle test the NFT creator on Opskins. So that's the place where, you know, you know that this stuff is actually working because we're, we have millions of customers hitting it every day. And then now that's all available to you so you can go build your own tools. So we, we started a, a contest for, uh, people creating applications and games with the NFT creator. Uh, and I've, you know, the first day we had 40 new games that people built, or sorry, the first week we had 40 new games and it's a several week long contest. So I'm really looking forward to what people are building because they're, they're seeing how quickly they can make really interesting applications with the tool set that's here. Uh, anyone's got another question for Malcolm? Yeah. We got what, one more question from the community, Malcolm. Let me, do, do, do you see us? Yeah, he's coming over. Um, sure. Put him in the right place. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, I don't, maybe I might have missed that part, but did you showcase like um, more of the visual stuff that are created by like, you know, aver average users and not necessarily by developers? Like, is, can someone actually generate profits if they don't code on a platform, like not from like, you know, yeah. buying skins, but actually creating their own assets. Yeah. 
So this sticker generator, we've had 100,000 stickers generated. There's zero code required. You can go do this yourself. You can, I think it's creator.wax.io. Um, and uh, you, you literally put in a piece of art and you can create it and go sell it. So is there anything else like that on the wax that, uh, again, codeless basically? Or is that just the stickers? Um, I would say the only thing that's truly codeless um, is that right now. Uh, of course, the marketplace itself, let's say if you have assets, you can deposit them and sell them and run that like a business. So the marketplace is a codeless function. Unless you're trying to build your own marketplace, then you would need to do some coding. So listen, Malcolm, first of all, I want to thank you so much for being here, giving us your time, uh, sharing us what Wax is. I, I personally think it's an amazing product and a mind-blowing uh, platform. I wish you the best of luck for the, for the mainnet launch. And you know, I'm, I'm gonna put this up uh, so you can share with your community. And, uh, yeah, and if, yeah we're, we're always looking for folks who uh, have dApps and want to port them over to Wax. We'll, we're definitely here to handhold people through it. I don't think they'll need much because it's pretty simple. So uh, if you have dApps, you wanna bring over ES dApps or you know folks, uh, please you know, reach out to us. Um, the QR code right behind me, I think it's right there. Um, yeah. <laughs> is that so wax.io slash dapps maximize maximize your screen so that people also uh, at home can yeah exactly yeah. great <laughs> uh, okay so <clears throat> uh, Malcolm thank you very much for being here giving us your time and uh, and we'll 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 continue online you and me yeah thank you everybody it's a pleasure Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys.